My friends, today's uh, gospel tells of the women who were the first witnesses of the resurrection. In the creed, we say that Jesus descended to the dead after his crucifixion. This means that Jesus brings the light of God represented by our paschal candle into that dark place of death. Jesus brings the power of God into the realm of death. And with this power, he breaks the hold that death has over us. The resurrection of Jesus is the declaration of victory over the terrible power of death. In the gospel, we are told that a huge stone had been rolled across the entrance of Jesus' tomb. This huge stone stands for the awful finality of death. But in Jesus' victory, that stone is effortlessly rolled away. Now, while we joyfully celebrate the victory of Jesus over death on this glorious Easter day, we are mindful that this is still a time of sacrifice. This pandemic is very much like a huge stone that continues to seal us in. For the past four weeks, you have been asked to give up many things, to make many sacrifices. You've sacrificed your freedom of movement and freedom of association. You've sacrificed much of your independence and much of the freedom to control our own lives. This has been taken from us to a great degree. The freedoms that we have always taken for granted have been replaced by financial loss for many of us, the loss of self-worth that comes from work, and I think for all of us the loss of peace that comes from worry, anxiety, and fear. How we long for the stone of this pandemic to be rolled away. Is it just coincidence that this time of sacrifice has coincided with the season of Lent, now officially ended? I say officially ended because the Lent of uh, 2020 will go down in history as the Lent that refused to go away. The time of sacrifice continues. It continues in a special way for us Catholics. You have been asked to sacrifice the Mass. Some of you, weekly, daily Mass. Certainly Sunday Mass, and even the solemn services of Holy Week, and the beautiful services of Easter. You have been asked to sacrifice all of those. For nearly a month now, you have not had access to the Mass and to many of the sacraments. Some of you are angry and disappointed. Where is the Church when we need it the most? Where are our priests? Yes, we are grateful for the wonderful technology that has helped to keep us all connected including the live streaming of the Mass. Having the Mass live streamed from this, our parish church, has meant a lot to many of us. Yet we know that live streaming the Mass is not the same as attending Mass together as a parish. And so I would urge you to gather your family together every day to pray and to read the Bible. Make it your own family liturgy. Pray for those who do not have a family to support them. Now we know that the ongoing pandemic has laid bare the weaknesses of government and science. It has also revealed some limitations in our church. One weakness is that we have fallen in the last few decades into the error of activism. Keep busy. 
We value activity over contemplation. We have chosen to be Martha rather than Mary. Projects, committees, emails, involvement. Is that what makes a good Catholic parishioner? Some people are saying that our, all our homes have been changed into monasteries. We are like monks and nuns now, living a life of contemplation. Perhaps we are discovering something that we have lost and something that we need to regain, even when this pandemic is over. I don't think we want to return to being busy all the time, not having time to just to enjoy life, to contemplate all the, the wonders of this world. Activism has also affected the priests and not altogether in a good way. Who is the good priest? Is it not the priest who get things done? Is it not the priest who is the good manager? The priest who attends five meetings a day, keeps 10 appointments, writes and receives 37 emails, and who keeps everyone occupied and happy while the priest himself is driving himself into the ground. Activism. We need to change, we need to be active, of course, but we need to be more contemplative, as we have almost been forced to do uh, during this time of shelter in place. Another weakness that has been revealed in our church is that we approach religion as consumers. Well, that shouldn't surprise us because all of us are consumers, but Catholics also. So how easy it is to see the Mass and the sacraments as commodities. And so we see the past month as a time of deprivation. But the Mass and Communion do not have expiration dates. The last Mass that you attended, even if it was a month ago, the last Communion that you received, even though it was a month ago, are still giving you sufficient grace to get you through until that time when we can at last, and at last attend Mass and receive Communion again. And that leads us, or me, to a very important question. What will it be like when we are able to attend Mass together again as a parish? What will the world be like when the stone of this pandemic is finally rolled away? Will it just be a return to normal? Will our participation at Mass be different? Will we be different? Will our parish be different? I am confident that we will emerge from the darkness of this pandemic into a brighter, more loving, more compassionate world. Whether that day is a month from now, or three months, or whenever from now, what a joyful day that will be. I expect we'll see people crying, weeping, when they come to Mass again. Tears of joy. We will soak these, these old pews. We will drench them with our tears as we come together again, when the stone is finally rolled away.